Should we do something that we probably never thought we would do and actually have a taste of the wine? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> That's a very good idea. Let's do that. Perfect time to drink a great glass of 1882 Tony Port. Oh, this is your breakfast, Charles. Thank you. It's hard to imagine that even in four or five generations' time, they would be able to make a, a wine better than the one we have here today. You know? um, and that was made with, probably without electricity. It's actually quite fun to think that this wine was probably you know, transported in an ox cart down to the river and then you know, rolled onto a barco reveal and taken by bait down to Gaia. The great thing about wines like this is that you, when you walk into the room, the whole room just you know, smells of this fantastic sort of concentration of uh, it's got those almost um, what well, one of the aromas that comes through a lot is that sort of almost orangey sort of smell that that comes through in these very old wines I love this sort of um, slightly almost greenish tinge that the wine gets on the rim when wines get to this age um, you know it's uh, zesty vibrance, you know, zest, orange zest, as you say, is absolutely... It's like admiring a sort of a very rare jewel. Think of what, what they lived through. I mean, the, there was sort of, you know, two world wars, the, the crisis in Portugal in 1974, and all this time the wine was sitting there in the lodge, just you know, minding its own business. And when so many other families came out of the port business and had yeah, to yeah. leave because it wasn't going to, I uh, think that's a key it thing. It wasn't going to be a future, and they steadfastly and resolutely stuck to um, doing what they felt they knew best and and producing great wines and, and and yet at the same time keeping a wine like this I mean it just I mean it, it, it is it's almost frightening um, it's so fresh and you know beautiful fresh finish and I mean if, if anything smells of age that smells of age that smells of time. coffee and marzipan and but it's, it's almost a wine that you it's almost a sacrilege to describe it it's just to enjoy the history of I think the decision to release the wine now with uh, bringing together the various components of our family heritage and the, the, the history of our family um, with a decanter from Atlantis Crystal in Portugal, the silver from Scotland to AJ's home where he came to Portugal as a young man, and um, the box uh, made by Smythons of Bond Street I think this brings the whole circle even closer because Morris's war diaries were written in a Smithson's notebook. And um, Churchill lived there, uh, very close to there. The, the, the history books show his, that was where he had an apartment that he lived with uh, in for years. They're crossing the road and he sees Grandpa, this is 1926 or something, and he looks at my grandfather and just lifts his walking stick and says, Port. <laughs> he couldn't remember his name. He couldn't remember he was called Maurice Symington, but he remembered drinking port with him in the trenches and in the war. And I think that was Grandpa's proudest moment, you know, port. Okay, come on, Chili, go and sit down. Oh, come on, Rupe. 
Okay, now she's sitting. Okay, guys, thanks very much. That's it.